Hi everyone, in uh, today's video, I am going to take up a question from Captain Subramaniam's uh, Practical Navigation book, Exercise 7. Uh, this is regarding the amplitude of sun. And this is question number 2. I will take up uh, question number 1 as well sometime later. Um, and this question we have, uh, it's 1st of May 1992. And uh, the DR or dead reckoning position, we have 30 degrees 6 minutes north, 179 degree 45 minutes west. The setting sun, which is very important, is that the sun was setting and the bearing of the setting sun was 285 degrees compass. Uh, if variation was 2 degrees west, you have to find the deviation for the ship's head. Alright, so once you have noted this information, you would have to go into the nautical almanac uh, for the 1st of May. And before you do that, just uh, note the latitude. Uh, 30 degrees 6 minutes north and the fact that uh, the sun was setting so these are the two things you have to note uh, because um, and again uh, sun is sun setting not sunrise so sunset sunset time we will be noting down the local mean time of the sunset for the 1st of May 1992 for the latitude of 30 degrees 6 minutes north all right so let's go into the nautical almanac if you don't have the nautical almanac um, you would need the nautical almanac to solve this question but otherwise just use the one that I'm showing you here all right so as you can see here if I zoom in it's the first of May um, and uh, for the first of May you can see that the Sun is setting here so the sunset time is given here so if you don't know um, why I'm using this time as sunset time let me just zoom in again so this is the sunset time all right um, this is the sunset time here and for 30 degrees north, you can see this is the sunset time. So the latitude is roughly 30 degrees north. So you don't have to do interpolation here unless it was 32 or 33. You would have to do some interpolation here. But it's roughly 30 degrees north and I can just take the time straight away 1837. Otherwise, if you want to do interpolation, you can. Uh, it won't make much of a difference here in this case. So 1837 is the time here. So I go back here, I note down the time and I go back here and I have noted down the time as 1837 here. So 1st of May, 18 hours 37 minutes is the sunset time. Then we have the LIT time, which is the longitude in time west. LIT time, uh, longitude in time or LIT. So how do I get LIT? Uh, I just take my longitude and divide it by 15. And you don't have to round it off just divide longitude by 15 so in this case your longitude is 179 degrees 45 minutes just divide it by 15 and you will get 11 hours 59 minutes 00, 00 seconds so don't write 11 degrees here uh, and 59 minutes because it's time we are talking about lit stands for longitude in time so make sure that you write the unit in hours and minutes and not degrees and minutes now longitude in time because the longitude is west of lo west longitude is west the GMT will be the best, right? So that means the GMT is ahead of you. So normally if you are in west longitude, your west longitude is here. This is GMT. And then this is east, right? So as you go eastward from GMT, you add hours, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, every 15 degrees. And as you go towards west from GMT, you subtract 1 hour, 2 hour, 3 hour, every 15 degrees. Alright, so of course the first 7.5 degrees on either side is zone 0, which is keeping the same time as GMT. I have explained all this in my previous video, so I don't want to waste too much time here. So always remember that if you are in west longitude, GMT is ahead of you. GMT is the best. Longitude west, GMT is the best. That means that if you add the longitude in time to LMT, you get the GMT. So when you add 11 hours 59 minutes to 18 hours 37 minutes, so 0 is 0, 37 plus 59 is 96 so 96 minutes can't be possible so it's 36 minutes so 96 minus 60 is 36 minutes and you take one hour here so 96 minutes is one hour 36 minutes right so that's why you write 36 minutes here and then this becomes 19 plus 11 30 so it can't be 30 hours so it's 30 minus 24 which is 6 hours so basically you can say that the lmt or the local mean time of sunset on your ship for was 18 hours 37 minutes in the evening 6 637 in the evening and then you've almost added like 
12 hours 11 hours 59 minutes so you are gone into the next day so at gmt so although your ship is here somewhere in the west longitude the time here is 1837 for sunset but the corresponding gmt time the time at gmt is 636 but it's on the 2nd of may no no more on the 1st of may so you on your ship it's 1st of may but on the at gmt it is already 2nd of may so on your ship when you are in the west longitude when the sun is setting it's 1837 but at that point of time the gmt time is 636 now you must ask me why do i have to know the gmt time i know the time of sunset on my ship i don't have to worry about gmt time well you have to worry about gmt time so that you can go into the nautical almanac and note down the sun's declination that is why you need to know the gmt time all right that is the reason so you note down the gmt time and the date as well the date has changed now it is no longer first of may as mentioned in the question it's second of may so gmt has now become second of may 636 now remember when you go back into the nautical almanac you have to look at second of may 2nd of May and 6.36 is the time. Now you will see that the sunrise and the sunset times and all the twilight times and the equation of time, all that time is given in local mean time, LMT. But the time which is here, which is next to the date, all this time here, all this time here is in GMT. Alright, so you have to look for 6 hours so if you go into the corresponding row for 6 hours and you look at the declination here, I will zoom in here, it's 15 degrees, 27.8 minutes north. Alright, so 15 degrees, 27.8 minutes north. As you can see, the time I need the declination for is 636. So I can see as the declination goes from 6 towards 7, the declination is increasing from 27.8 to 28.5. So the correction I will apply will be added to the declination because the declination is increasing from 6 o'clock going towards 7 o'clock. I need the declination for 636. So of course the declination that I have for 6 will be less than what I need for 636. Right? So the correction for that I also have to note down the D value here. D 0 0.8. Alright? So these are the three things that I will note. And then I will go back here and then you can see here I have written down the declination is 15 degrees 27.8 minutes north. The D value is 0 0.8 and it's an addition correction because the declination was increasing. So this declination is for 6 hours. I apply the correction for 36 minutes and then I get 6 hours 36 minutes of declination. Now how do I apply the correction for 36 minutes? I will take the value of 0 0.8, the D value of 0 0.8 and go into the nautical almanac for 36 minutes. So I will go into the increments page for 36 minutes. I will just erase all this so that you guys don't get confused. It's a lot of clutter on your screen here. So I will just erase all this. All right. So I will go into the nautical almanac. I will go for 36 minutes increment page and use the D value of 0 0.8. All right. So I go back into the nautical almanac for 36 minutes uh, 36 minutes will be somewhere here so there is 36 minutes here so you can see 36 minutes is here so for 0 0.8 so 36 minutes is here for 0 0.8 if I have to highlight it for 0 0.8 the corresponding correction value is 0 0.5 alright so this is the D correction the D value is 0 0.8 the corresponding correction value is 0 0.5 so i come back here and i will use that 0 0.5 here you can see and i will add to it because the declination was increasing from 6 to 6 7 o'clock so now the final declination for 6 hours 36 minutes is 15 degrees 28.3 minutes north i have the latitude with me so the formula is sine of amplitude equals sine of declination divided by cos of latitude so put in the values for declination here and latitude here, you will get 0 0.03, 0 0.30834. I have just stuck to five decimal places. You can take more. And then of course, amplitude is equal to shift sine inverse. So this is the next step. Make sure you do that as well. Don't stop at 0 0.30834. You have to shift, press shift sine inverse. Then you get amplitude is 17.9 degrees. 
Now, when you get 17.9 degrees, you have to name the amplitude. So, how do you name it? Because the sun was setting, you will name it west. Sun was setting. If it was rising, you would have named it east. Because sun was setting, it would be west. And of course, my apologies, let me make a quick correction here. This will be north because the declination, it takes the name of the declination. So, name of the declination is north. Right? So, west 17.8 minutes north. What does that mean? That means is that if you have this as a compass, right? So, this is north, this is south, this is west and this is east. West 17.9 minutes would be somewhere here. Right? So, if west is 270 and north is 360. So, as you go from west towards north by 17.9 degrees value, that means you are adding 17.9 degrees to 270 degrees to get this value which will be 287.9 that's your true bearing or true azimuth so 17.9 plus 270 is 287.9 your compass azimuth is given to you in the question as 285 degrees right so when you go back to the question you can see the sun was bearing 285 degree compass all right so, difference between true and compass azimuth gives you compass error. So, compass is less. 285 is compass. So, error will be east. Compass error is east because compass is less. So, 287.9 minus 285 is 2.9 degrees east. Then you have a variation of 2 degrees west. Now, compass error is nothing but a combination of variation and deviation. So, if your compass error is 2.9 degrees east and your variation is 2 degrees west, the deviation has to be of the opposite name and a larger value. So, that is 4.9 degrees east. So, that means if I subtract 4.9 degrees east and 2 degrees west, that is the deviation and variation, I will get compass error 2.9 degrees east. But if you don't know, you can use rules like, you know, people use uh, rule of thumbs like CDM, VT, and or they have some other rules a a d e t compass add east you get true and otherwise the other way around but what i do is that i try to understand it using concepts right so what i do is that i draw a compass and i tell myself this that if true azimuth is 287.9 this is 287.9 is compass right that is the true and compass is 285. So, I just exaggerate the angle so that it's not confusing for me. Right? So, the difference between compass and true is compass error. This angle is compass error, which is 2.9 degrees east. Now, what is variation? Variation is nothing but the angle between true and magnetic. Right? So, if it is 2 degrees west is the variation, that means magnetic is to the west of true. right so that is 2 degrees west so this must be magnetic bearing right so this is magnetic bearing so if it is 2 degrees west it must be 289.9 is magnetic bearings now what is deviation deviation is nothing but the angle between compass and magnetic where compass is lying to the east of magnetic but the total value here is variation plus compass error which is 4.9 degrees and compass is lying to the east of the magnetic so therefore deviation is 4.9 degrees east all right so it depends on what rule you want to use people use a relationship between true and magnetic is variation and compass uh, and magnetic is deviation so they have different rule of thumbs but i like to understand it conceptually i don't know what suits well for you please go with that but this is how you go about solving the amplitude question I will take up question number uh, one and the other questions as well as I go along. But let me know if there are any questions regarding this video and please put it in the comment section. I'll try my best to answer it. Thank you 